iFanboy at San Diego Comic Con 2012 is brought to you by Seagate, the storage of choice for creative professionals. I'm here with Jim McCann. I'm here with Connor Kilpatrick. Jim, you are the writer of the ridiculously huge Mind the Gap. Everything I do is ridiculously huge. It's, it's a bit, of, it's a bit, it's a bit big. Is what it I'm is saying. very big, and you know what? Being sandwiched between Grant Morrison and BKV, I will take that sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's talk about Mind the Gap now. Your, your, your few Your sandwich or oh, the we'll, we'll get it. the sandwiches at the end. We get to the funny stuff at the end. All right. Let's get the business out of the way. So, right, let's get this so Mind the Gap, it's your futures yeah. in, the mysteries unfolding. Tell people about yep. the book. Uh, Mind the Gap is a uh, kind of supernatural murder mystery. It's Twin Peaks X-Files meets um, a mystery like Ten Little Indians, um, where Elle is attacked uh, on a subway platform and left for dead. Uh, but it's no ordinary mugging. She's actually at the center of a great conspiracy, and she knows everything about it, but her brain is, she's basically trapped inside her own mind in a space between the worlds, and because being in a coma isn't enough challenge, she's also an amnesiac. So she's trying to piece everything together, and she's kind of the eyes of the reader also. Um, meanwhile, back on the real world, um, Everybody is either trying to cover their tracks or discover the clues and try and piece it together as well. So there's a lot of moving parts, um, but it is something that I have completely planned out. And for every answer that you get, it'll raise three more questions. So you, you mentioned the clues in the planning. There's a lot of there's a lot of suspects. There's a lot of you put a lot of hidden stuff in the art and the clues. Yes. How do you keep track of everything? Do you have spreadsheets? Do you have a crazy board, a wall in your apartment with lots of thread? I have a crazy, insane person, Jim McCann, board in my wall <laughs> of my head. Um, when I close my eyes, it's tattooed there. Uh, no, I. Um, when I started this, the tagline is and remains that everyone is a suspect, no one is innocent. Mm -hmm. And it's true. Like, there isn't a single person that's not guilty of something or by the end won't be. Um, but, you know, I started by knowing the ending and then looking at each character and how they fit in. And also how some characters, if you think about it as like a spider web, like if Elle's family is over here and then um, there's like, a character over here who kind of hits the web, it'll reverberate all the way over there and they don't realize they're all connected until certain events will bring them together. Like in issue, uh, issue three is about to come out um, and Elle makes first contact with Joe, her best friend, uh, between the worlds. And in issue four there's an arrest made on her attack. And issue five is actually what I really want to try to do and what we're doing um, is um, once a big, I can curse, right? Yeah. Okay. Once a big holy shit moment happens. I know that was so scandalous. <laughs> you felt good though, right? It did. Uh, no. Um, once a big holy shit moment happens, I want to go back and uh, find an artist that's, that's right to fit the bill who will kind of do a flashback sequence that's very character driven and focused on that character. And so um, to show you how we got to there, to show you the other side of conversations that you've seen. And so issue five is done by the great Adrian Alfona. Wow. So yes, he's, um, he's going to be telling a certain person's entire backstory and life and how they fit in and it's uh, insanely amazing that now, I got Adrian. Is it really challenging to put, to write a story that's so intricately so plotted and everything? Um, it is because sometimes I feel like, like issue two is called Two Nobodies and um, every scene was two pages mm -hmm. with just two people and that was a bit challenging to make sure like that it wasn't decompressed but it also didn't have a billion word balloons. Um, so, but then I didn't feel like I felt, uh, or I spent enough time with some other characters. So I try and balance it out. Um, issue four, almost the whole issue is with Elle. 
um, in the garden. And so, uh, because she's the main character. And I really want to show, I really want her to start getting into her own head, uh, which will help move the mystery forward. And then it's also a matter of, like, I really want to do certain things and show certain reveals because I'm super excited about, a, I have all of the, like, holy shit things happen, like, planned out. And it's a matter of building there and kind of laying the groundwork, but at the same time, not making it too obvious. Because somebody has already found, that's one thing that I love about this book is that the fans are playing along. Yeah. They're putting on their Sherlock Holmes hat and they're getting out their magnifying glass and looking at Rodine's art. They have the pipe that goes like this? Uh, yeah. Like a pipe? Yeah, well, the pipe that goes one of these things, the big one. How else would a pipe go? There's the straight pipes, like Popeye. Pop into the pipes. And there's You're pipe talking about a bong. Oh. <laughs> so, no. Um, they're playing on. They're writing. Uh, they're writing in letters about their theories. There's a website that, like, dissects every page. Um, Has anybody gotten it yet? There's one person who's got who has found something that's like pretty key to the whole thing. And I thought I hit it really well. And um, and it was gonna come. It's it's going to come back into play. But uh. And they wrote in. They wrote a fan letter in asking if there was all this stuff. And I was like, I am holding on to this until the issue where it's revealed. And be like, yes, back in May, you were right. <laughs> now, how many issues are we planning on going with this? Because it's a complete story. So. It is. Um, it's a finite, ongoing, kind of like Why the Last Man and Ex Machina. But I kind of don't want to let people know um, how long it is because then... They'll start to know when they're. Do you have a plan? Oh, yeah. Yes, I mean I had to when I sat down with Rodine and Sonia, and I said, "Look, it would be this long of a commitment," right. and they said, "Okay." So. So now, last year when we talked to you at Comic Con, you won an Eisner. Oh yeah. You did for the Dapper Return of the Dapper Men. Now. Which is still weird. You have a special Comic Con edition book out. Yes. Is that is that available for people outside of the convention? Um, it will be. It'll be in the bookstore or in your in bookstores and in your comic shops. I think um, two weeks after the con. I think it, it comes out in August, maybe September. It's kind of weird with right. some shipping schedules in bookstores. But yes. It, What's in the book that's different? Um. Uh, it has eyes or a seal uh, to remind me no um because i still don't believe it um no it has the two free comic book day stories that we've done over the past two years that are actually bridge the gap between uh the gap no um the it's not a crossover uh they bridge uh return of the dapper men with the sequel time of the dapper men and then my one of my favorite things is um we found janet's sketchbook from when she came to New York and we first sat down and started talking about it. And she was in my living room just sketching out things. Right. And I was standing over her shoulder and I was like, oh, okay, that's a new character. Yeah. And that's a that's a villain. And that's a really so, cool thing to find. Yeah, oh, it was amazing. And you can also see like the all the robots were supposed to look the same yeah. and how Zoe was supposed to look. It's completely different because it just, and how they evolved. Yeah. and and. It shows Janet's mind, just the way, a little bit of the way it works. I don't think any book would do Janet's mind justice. Now, you have uh, the sequel coming out. How's the work coming on that? Um, it's going well. Um, we are, we want this to be kind of the Empire Strikes Back to Return of the Dapper Men's Star Wars. Um, it's it's, it's Star new, Wars. It's, uh, yes, okay. It's both. It's both. It's Star Wars. Uh, at least you didn't say an episode number. Um, but yeah, so the story, I took a step back, you know, we kind of looked at this stuff and I realized that I want the story to be a little bit bigger because the scope is bigger this time. And so we, um, we're working on that and we're taking our time because we want to do it right. But also in the meantime, we're working on something else, uh, that we'll be announcing, uh, hopefully very soon. Maybe we will be on a convention floor the next time we speak, and I can talk more about it. So Ron, I got this iPad, Okay. but I want to watch movies on it. How do I do that? The Seagate GoFlex satellite hard drive. Thank you to Seagate for sponsoring all of our San Diego Comic-Con coverage. This little hard drive can carry all your movies, uh, music, any other media, stream it wirelessly to your tablet. 
So I don't got to keep it on my you hardware. Know, I got to stream it. Exactly. And it works with Android, iPad, whatever you need. The free GoFlex satellite app lets you stream all your content, and you can enjoy it while you're on your flight back to, uh, back to L.A. Back to L.A. I can just pop a movie on there, watch it on my iPad. No big deal. No big deal at all. Go to Seagate.com slash iFanboy. Get 10% off the Seagate GoFlex satellite hard drive only for iFanboy viewers. So go get that. And thank you again for Seagate for sponsoring our coverage.